Hi, this is Charlie Calvert, and I'm here to introduce the second of a multi-part series of videos on variants. Um, Eric Lippert will be our presenter during this series, and what he did in the first part of the series was show you some of the basics of how variants works, uh, why we introduce the feature, how the syntax looks when you're working within a program. In the second part in the series, what he's going to show you is how to work with variants when you're dealing with interfaces. So, I'm going to turn it over to Eric now and let you proceed in his capable hands. Thank you. You should be able to do this yourself, right? You should be able to say, well, I want to make an interface and I want my interface to be read-only um, and therefore I should be able to make a covariant too, right? Uh, so, let me give you an example of that. Uh, suppose we have uh, a fairly common thing to do is to, um, is to, you want to be able to tag an item um, with, say, a string, right? You've got some class and you need to be able to associate some some information with it that the class's designer didn't consider, uh, and so you just kind of stick one of these little tags onto it. Right? So maybe I tagged item um, has a, uh, a, a getter, which is the value, and a string, uh, which is its tag. Right. Okay, so pretty straightforward. And maybe we have uh, an implementation of this class that's just pretty straightforward there, right? We've got a tagged item and it's got a value and a tag and a little constructor and great. Okay. So, um, now suppose we have a method that takes uh, a tagged board game. I tagged item board game. Right, and it does whatever. Right. And we'll make a, a new tagged item of type chess. Right. Uh, and its value will be a new chess set and its tag will be that this is the Civil War chess set. Okay, great. Now, should we be able to pass this thing to M3? No. Uh, we get this error that says we cannot convert from this type to the expected type. Right. Well, why not? Why shouldn't we be able to? Um, this interface here is a read-only interface. There's there's nothing in here where T is in an input position. Right? Uh, so what we do is we tell the compiler uh, I would like this interface to be um, applicable for covariant um, covariant conversions on T. Right? And we say that by saying okay well everywhere T is used it's in an output position. So we'll say out T here. Right? And now if we rebuild this build succeeded, everything is fine. Right? Um, so this is essentially the new feature from the declaration side. You say out t and now this interface's conversions become covariant in t. Right? Uh, and again this only works on uh, interfaces and delegates and only if the t in question is coming from a reference type and going to a reference type in the conversion. Right? However, um, the class conversions are still invariant, right? So if, for example, I say uh, I have a tagged item of game, right? right? This is not legal, right? You notice we get this red squiggly here, right? Um, and it says cannot implicitly convert the one type to the other type, right? Covariance and contravariance only works on interfaces and delegates. Right? So let's talk a bit about delegates. Right? Um, let's make up a little generic delegate. Right? Uh, we'll make a delegate. We'll call it my action. Let's suppose it returns void and it takes um, a t1 and a t2. Right. Okay. So little delegate, two parameters. Right. 
uh, we could say my action and this guy takes a person and a string right? and okay so we've got a person and a string and what does it do it says person dot name right it sets the name great pretty straightforward little guy now should we also be able to say my action employee string Should we be able to do that? Well, we're getting a red squiggly here, so obviously the compiler thinks that something is wrong, but why shouldn't we be able to? Right? Uh, we have here a method that takes a person and a string. Right? Now, set name two is going to be a method that takes an employee and a string, right? and it's going to call whatever's in set name one. Right? In fact, it's going to be whatever's in set name one. Right? This is a, a reference assignment. The thing that's in set name can take any person. So it can surely take an employee because an employee is a person. Right? So there shouldn't be any type problem here. We are guaranteed that the um, that the caller uh, will pass the right kind of thing to the callee. Right? It's going to pass it something more specific than what it needs. Um, and nevertheless, this is legal, and we get a little error that says cannot implicitly convert the one type to the other. Right? So again, we tell the compiler that we want this variant conversion. Um, by saying in here, not out, because uh, we are using T1 and T2 only in input positions, not in any of the output positions of this delegate. Right? So this, you'll notice, is a contravariant conversion. It's not a covariant conversion. It's a contravariant conversion because we are saying, well, because employee goes to person, my action of person comma string should go to my action of employee comma string right so we've reversed the direction of the conversion right on the one hand we're saying employee goes to person and on the other hand we're saying something of person goes to something of employee and so conversions like that are called contravariant conversions and we tag them with the in right? so the the basic way to remember this is covariant is always about stuff going out contravariant is almost always about stuff coming in there are some exceptions to that rule but those are complicated weird situations that we're not going to talk about today um, and the compiler just takes care of making sure that when you say in or out on a particular uh, type parameter that uh, you are in fact doing it correctly it goes through every possible usage of the type parameter in that delegate or interface and makes sure that you're doing it the right way and you'll notice that now that we've added the the ins to um, the declaration we've lost this little red squiggly here and everything works just fine. This works with write-only interfaces as well. Right? Uh, you don't normally think of interfaces as being write-only things, but there are some of them. Right? So for example, uh, iComparable of T right? uh, takes two things and tells you which one is bigger and you can see that in the uh, the IntelliSense here it's it actually calls out that oh yes this is an in T, right? So if we have uh, an employee, you know, a thing that can compare two employees equals whatever, we would put a comparer here, right? Uh, and then if you have, uh, say, well, okay, I have something that can compare two employees, and I would like something that can compare two managers. That should be legal, right? Something that can compare two employees can also com compare two managers because managers are employees. And again, you'll notice that we've reversed the direction of the um, of the convertibility, right? Manager goes to employee, therefore I comparable of employee goes to I comparable of manager. So again, this is a contravariant conversion, and that's called out by the fact that in the declaration it says in. Right. Um, we have defined in the framework uh, a bunch of covariant and, and contravariant uh, interfaces and delegates. Uh, you've already seen I enumerable. Um, you know, we call that out that I enumerable is out in IntelliSense. Um, it is perfectly legal for uh, an interface or a delegate type to be both covariant and contravariant in different type parameters. Um, it's not possible to be um, universally variant. You can't have something that varies in both directions on, on a given type parameter um, because such a thing would essentially be object. You could pass anything to it, right? Um, but for example, you'll notice uh, in the built-in funk type, um, 
the one that takes in a t and returns a t result, uh, the in t is the, the argument that goes in, and the out t result is the one that comes out. So this could be both covariant and contravariant. So who do we imagine will use this feature? We imagine that the business of declaring types that are covariant or contravariant is kind of a framework designer architect kind of thing to do. We don't expect that most people who are writing line of business programs will be declaring their interfaces or their delegates as, as covariant or contravariant. We're just going to go through the framework. We've already done a few of them and find places where it makes sense to make these annotations. And we expect that you know, people who have written their own frameworks uh, for you know, business applications or whatever will do the same thing. Um, but as for people who will use this feature, we expect that everybody will use this thing. We expect that everybody already has methods that take uh, an i enumerable of something, and they're passing in an i enumerable of something else, and they're wondering, well, why, why doesn't this work? And then they have to jump through some kind of hoops to get there. Now you don't have to, right? So like I said before, the point of this feature is stuff just works the way you think it should.